from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, April the 23rd, 2018. A mortar shell from Syria landed in Israeli territory today near the border. In response, the IDF hit a Syrian army artillery position. The IDF said the shell is believed to have been a case of spillover fighting from Syria's civil war and said the IDF sees the Syrian regime as responsible for every action in its territory and will not tolerate violations of the sovereignty of the State of Israel and the security of its citizens. And the IDF is investigating the death of a Palestinian teenager at the Gaza border. The teen was among four Palestinians said to have been killed by Israeli forces after they ran at and tried to breach the fence on Friday during massive violent demonstrations. The IDF said Hamas is using civilians, including children, as human shields, sending them to the fence and putting them in grave danger. Some 3,000 Palestinians protested along the Gaza border on Friday, burning tires and flying flaming kites across the fence. Today, more flaming kites were sent over the border, igniting Israeli fields. Firefighters were said to be on the scene battling the blaze. And four unarmed Palestinians were arrested after they breached the security fence today. The four were detained shortly after crossing into Israeli territory near Kibbutz Kisufim and taken for questioning. And terror group Hamas accused Israel and threatened retaliation on Saturday for the killing in Malaysia of a Hamas commander. Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh accused Israel's Mossad of killing Fadi Mohammed al bach in Kuala Lumpur who is said to be a drone and rocket expert. Israel has not responded to the accusations. Well, Israeli-born actress Natalie Portman took to social media this weekend to explain her decision Friday not to come to Israel this summer to accept the Genesis Prize. As we reported to you, Portman was supposed to arrive in June to accept the award, which recognizes outstanding achievement and commitment to Jewish values and the Jewish people. But on Friday, her representatives told the Prize Foundation that due to, quote, recent events in Israel, suggesting connection to either the situation at the Gaza fence or with the African migrants and asylum seekers that she could not in good conscience come to the country. After a backlash of criticism, Portman later specified, my decision not to attend the Genesis Prize ceremony has been mischaracterized by others. She said, let me speak for myself. I chose not to attend because I did not want to appear as endorsing Benjamin Netanyahu. Portman has criticized the policies of the prime minister in the past and emphasized that her decision was not against Israel. She wrote, I am not part of the BDS movement and do not endorse it. Like many Israelis and Jews, she wrote, around the world, I can be critical of the leadership in Israel without wanting to boycott the entire nation. The Genesis Foundation, meanwhile, said that the women's groups that Portman had designated would still receive the funds that the prize entails, but they would be dispersed by them and not by the actress. A Brooklyn man walking home from synagogue Saturday afternoon was assaulted in what is believed to have been an anti-Semitic attack. Video footage shows 52-year-old Menachem Moskowitz being jumped from behind in the Crown Heights neighborhood and assaulted by a man who yelled at him, you are fake Jews, you stole all my money. Moskowitz told CBS News that the man threatened to kill him. Last Friday night, a Jewish man was assaulted in Crown Heights. The Anti-Defamation League announced rewards for any information leading to the arrests and convictions of those involved in both incidents. New York Regional Director Evan Bernstein said, we unequivocally condemn these senseless assaults. We appreciate the leadership of the NYPD Hate Crimes Task Force who are investigating these assaults as hate crimes. He said, hopefully these rewards will encourage anyone who may have seen something to come forward. Thousands of Barnard College alumni have called on the New York school to reject a student referendum 
asking the administration to divest from eight companies doing business with Israel. As we reported to you, the referendum for divestment passed on Thursday, and now former students have launched a petition stating that the referendum silences and marginalizes a community on our campus by refusing to accept the right of the Jewish people to self-determination. It noted that the signatories held varying perspectives on issues like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but they wrote, we speak with one voice in our objection to the BDS movement. Writing BDS is not the solution. It has discouraged dialogue at the institution we love, the college that taught us to engage in meaningful discourse. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS from Monday, April the 23rd at 7 o'clock, it's the Wisdom of Dr. Ruth. At 7.30, Union for Reform Judaism President Rick Jacobs talks about expanding connections between Reform Jewish communities and other Jewish resources. That's from the December URJ Biennial in Boston. At 8.15, Jewish educator Avraham Infeld talks about the complexities inherent in the idea of Israel as a Jewish state in a lecture from Limud 2018 in Princeton. Then at 9, Mark Golub sits down with Arut Sheva's Yishai Fleischer on the Chaim, and at 10, Israeli author David Grossman speaks at the 92nd Street Y. And that's the JBS News update for Monday, April the 23rd, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.